Hi, and welcome to today's episode of Piano TV. I'm Alicia, your host, and it's tutorial time. We are going to be doing a tutorial for Clementi's Arietta. It's a preparatory B-level piece, and maybe like leaning in the grade one direction. It's kind of somewhere sandwiched in between. So if you've been playing piano for somewhere between six months to a year, or even six months to two years, this piece is gonna be um, up your alley, hopefully. So as we usually do with tutorials, we're gonna talk a little bit about the backstory, I'm gonna show you how to play the piece, and then we're gonna talk about how to practice the piece more effectively, little things to watch out for to make sure that you are learning what you need to learn, getting what you need to get out of this piece. And as always, the PDF, of the sheet music is free to download over on my website, which I will link below so that you can follow along, you can print it off, you can put it on your iPad, whatever you need to do to um, play along and learn a new piece of music. So let's get started. This piece that we're doing is by a composer named Musio Clementi. And we've talked about Clementi in depth on this channel before. So you can always check out our history video on Clementi if you want more details. Now he was a classical era composer who is most known for his piano sonatinas, which are at an intermediate level. They kind of run from great three to grade seven, somewhere in that ballpark. And we have taught the easiest of these, the grade three level um, Sonatina Opus 36 number one on this channel before. It's very well known, so you've probably heard the tune before. So you can also check that out if you're a little bit more advanced and you wanna get into um, some of the like meaty Clementi music. But since Clementi's music is mostly at a grade three level and up, I do like to um, explore, like he does have a few pieces that are more approachable for people starting out. We've done the um, some of his preludes on this channel. I believe we've done his E minor prelude, which is really quite fast. I'd say it's harder than the piece we're learning today, um, but you can check it out if you want. This is one of the easier pieces by Clementi at the prep B grade one level, like I said before. And I almost included this in my complete piano path level B course, but um, I just ran out of space. Uh, there's too many good pieces of music to teach. There's too many concepts to teach. So this one didn't quite make the cut, although I would have loved to teach this in the course. So that's why I'm bringing it to you. It's at that level. So, hey, if you are in CPPB and you're watching this, you can always learn this piece because it's gonna fit in with what you're learning. And for those of you who might be interested in joining our group classes that we open every six months or so, um, this will give you a little bit of a taste on uh, the level, the difficulty level of of, uh, CPPB, especially towards the end of our course. Let's get the basics down first. So let's figure out what the key signature is. And then we'll also talk about the tempo. So the tempo is Allegretto. It gives you a very specific marking, 96 beats per minute to about 108 beats per minute. Allegretto just means a little fast. Next up, the time, the key signature. So I'm looking at this, there's no sharps or flats hanging out in the key signature. So that's telling us, um, well, something quite obvious. It's either going to be in the key of C major or A minor, which are the only two key signatures with no sharps or flats. Of course, the title makes it a dead giveaway, Arietta and C major. It makes it pretty simple. Um, one way that we can validate this is just by looking at the opening notes. We're starting on a C, um, C, E, G. We're outlining a C chord right there in the beginning. That's a pretty dead giveaway. So next up, what is an aria or what is an arietta? Well, an arietta is a short aria. So, okay, let's ask the question, what's an aria? Well, it's a solo vocal piece with instrumental accompaniment. Put it another way, many pop music pieces of music could be um, considered the modern equivalent of an operatic aria. So from the title, we know that this is a melody driven piece. And as such, we want to bring that sound forward. So now I'm gonna play through it for you. You can get a feel for it and get a feel for the melody and then we're gonna break it down into um, practice components. It's a lovely tune, and since it's in the classical style, it features a moving, relatively independent left hand, as opposed to, say, chords. The nice thing about this, though, is that until the very end, the left hand actually doesn't jump around too much. It stays in a pretty stable um, hand position. So we're basically alternating between a five-finger position right until we get to 
this octave jump from G to G at the end. Otherwise, it's very little uh, wandering happening. The right hand melody also stays put within a fairly narrow range. And the reason for that is because pieces that are meant to be sung or to imitate singing music are generally going to be in a narrow range unless the vocalist is going nuts and singing all over the place. So the hands don't move around a ton in this one, but they are quite independent, which makes it a wonderful practice piece for us to explore some concepts like hand independence. Since it's such a melody driven piece, I like to encourage students to sing through this one. Learning the melody notes by ear before you even press the keys is going to help you out so much. So um, listening to recordings of it, just singing the tune along, being able to kind of hum that tune along is, is going to make such a difference. One technical aspect of this piece are the frequent two note slurs, which should be played with a drop lift motion. Let's hop to the keyboard and discuss how we're going to execute those. The drop lift motion for a two note slur looks something like this. Drop, lift, drop, lift. So what I'm doing, it's almost like my wrist is flexible and bouncing. So I sink into the first note and I lift off the second one. I'm kind of exaggerating the motion just so you can get a sense of it. Um, so this is the difference in sound between something like this. Uh, sorry. Versus this. So that drop lift gives it a lighter sound and yet it also gives it a more rhythmic sound. We've talked about two note slurs in depth on this channel so you can always check that video out if you want, but that's the general idea of it. And again, it drives the rhythm of this, of this piece in particular. Now, speaking of rhythmic sound, the two four time signature in this one gives it an interesting flavor. Our pattern of strong and weak beats in two four is strong, weak, strong, weak. So um, the first beat of every measure is strong, second beat of every measure is weak, strong, weak, strong, weak. And this gives it a sort of march-like flavor or um, like polka-like flavor, which are both types of music, uh, musical compositions that are in two four time. So the way we pull this off is by focusing on our two note slurs and paying attention to the downbeat. So I'll just give you a quick example of how to, how to do that on the keyboard. Pulse is largely carried by the two note slurs here. So if we're thinking strong, weak, strong, weak, one, two, one, two, one, two. So we're landing on the downbeats and then basically every time we get to beat one, we sink into that note a little more deeply. So I'm going to play the first line, just the right hand with no upbeats or downbeats, keeping everything all basically the same weight. So I was playing with the correct articulation. I was playing the two note slurs, but I wasn't varying the, um, I wasn't giving any oomph to any particular note. Whereas to, to really capture the rhythm of this two, four piece, I'm going to give a little more oomph onto beat one. And I'm going to get that drop lift motion on my two note slurs. Now I over exaggerated it, but hopefully that gives you the idea. Now, what's the musical form for this piece? Well, it looks to be ABA because we have uh, one section um, that kicks everything off. This is the A section. Ba -da 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 -da. Now, we're changing it pretty dramatically when we get into the B section, um, which kind of trails off at the end of the A section. We have a new part here with the broken pattern in the left hand. It gets a little bit more complex. And then we get back to basically a different version of the A section. Um, ba -da 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 -da. It's kind of like the um, the second half of, of the A section, but I'm gonna call it A1, just because it's a little bit different from the other one. Um, and then we finish it off like that. So ABA form, um, rounded binary, you know, a little bit of a change in the B section there is, um, is how we can kind of uh, figure this out. Now, there's no, there's no, repeats or, or section breaks or anything like that. Um, so this is informally figured out, but I'm just, it helps to look at the different parts of the piece because then you're able to see um, kind of more internal structures and it helps you structure your practice sessions as well. So instead of just looking at a blob of five lines that never end, um, basically this never ending sheet of music, you can see it as, okay, well, the first section is basically the first eight bars. The next section is the third line and so on. It just makes, um, the piece simpler to practice. In order to play that broken pattern in the left hand, you're going to need to be able to keep your left hand loose. And it's going to be more of a rocking side to side motion. So here are the notes we're going B, G, B, G, C, G, C, G, D, G. 
We're basically alternating back and forth uh, with the G and then the thumb uh, or the upper notes are moving around a little bit. So if I keep my hand totally stable and try to play that just with my fingers. It's a lot of work for the hand. Um, it's especially a lot of work for the fingers. I'm gonna get tired, I'm gonna get tension. A way to keep it looser is to, when you're playing a note up top, tilt a little bit towards the right. When you're playing a note on the bottom, tilt a little bit towards the left. So we're kind of going back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. Just this kind of slight swing in my wrist back and forth. What this means is I have to, um, I don't press with the fingers as much. So my fingers are putting less energy into the notes. Um, um, a lot of the momentum of my, my notes being pressed are, are coming from actually just this rocking motion. I'm not really pressing my thumb, for example. I'm more just rocking into that note. And that's going to help keep your wrist loose as you are, um, as you're doing it. The way that I would structure learning this piece as a practice plan and planning, planning out each of your sessions is to consider that this piece will probably take you somewhere in the ballpark of two to three weeks to learn, um, maybe three weeks for the average student. For week one, the whole point would be to get it to a solid, steady tempo at a relatively slow tempo, but just being able to play the whole thing steadily through, even if it's really slow, that would be the main goal of week one. Uh, by the end of week one, being able to play with a slow metronome, I think would be really useful because then in week two and three, you're going to be focusing on speed, speeding it up bit by bit in little increments each day. And working with the metronome is really helpful to slowly tweak the speeds little by little. Otherwise, if you're speeding up without the metronome, it works, it's fine. Um, but it's harder to do it in this really incremental way. It's like if you were lifting weights just by guessing how heavy the weights were, as opposed to knowing the exact number numbers, like the exact weight numbers. So that's why like working with a metronome gives you the exact number. So you can just tweak it slightly and make a slight improvement and do that for a couple weeks in a row. That's the way that I would approach learning this one. Give yourself ample time to learn it. If it takes you fewer than three weeks or two to three weeks, then you're probably above this level. Uh, if it takes you longer than three weeks, this is probably a little on the higher end for you and you might be better served learning um, easier preparatory music. So maybe music at a preparatory A level, stuff that I would be teaching in my um, Complete Piano Path A level or um, some of the introductory materials that I've shared before on this channel. And that's it for today's lesson. Like I mentioned before, you can head to the website linked below to download the PDF in order to learn how to play this piece. I hope you have fun with it. And if you like learning this and you're curious about what it would be like to join a group of people learning the same music a community of fellow musicians, do check out our Complete Piano Path for Beginners classes, which open every six months. The B level class is gonna be opening um, right away and the opportunity to join is gonna be really short. So make sure to join the wait list. You can uh, see those linked below as well. And I hope to have you guys there. Uh, if not, keep staying tuned for more videos and I'll catch you guys in the next one.